question that I've had to evolve over six years and I'm not I don't intend this to be esoteric but it, you have to answer, ask this question <laughs> the question is where does performance where do results come from you look at sports people multimillionaires people who are good at anything so I call that a result so mm -hmm. I go out lift 500 pounds okay that's the result yeah where does that result come from um, I would say discipline work practice I don't know if consistency over time is the same as discipline, but yeah, similar. Time spent doing it gets better over time. Yeah, um, I would say mastery of skill sets. Is how is that? Is that different? The discipline plus time plus hard work. Mm, how would you define I think, mastery? I think discipline over time creates mastery. Okay. How would other people look at, man, that person's number one in the world because? Um, I think a lot of people would look at it as natural gifts and abilities. Um, Background family. Yeah. Silver spoony type thing. Mm -hmm. So this is, having asked that question and answered it with the pre precognition that you're betting on the fact that discipline equals results, time, doing something over time gets you better at it. Uh, the notion that since I'm gifted, I'm going to be good at it, a lot of people consider that. And since I was born into a good family, I have a better chance of being successful. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we're gonna see if that plays out through the training or the training provides you access at a more uh, elementary level than that because okay. this would mean you may not have discipline hmm. like there may be people that just don't have discipline does hard work always produce results is there something other, some other thing going on that negates hard work as the solution? Because you put two people in a room, they do the same amount of work. Mm -hmm. Why does one succeed and the other one not? Yeah. Over time, like the longer you do something, there's two trains of thought. The longer you do something, the worse you get at it. Mm -hmm. So what is going on in the background that people aren't effective over time? Mm -hmm. Because if you give somebody a month to do something, they don't do anything for until the last four days. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that's not the case. Like there's some underpinning that is being missed. But there's books about all that shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How to be disciplined, and all that shen you know shenanigans. Mm -hmm. So, and it's not an insult. What is a paradigm? How would you? If I, since I'm using, I'm going to use that word, how would you define paradigm? Um, I think paradigm is like a, to me it's a like mindset shift. Okay. A shift? Yeah, like a shifting, <clears throat> a, um, Possible shift in mindset. Perspective. Because one of the fun things, and you probably do this a lot in sales and when you're coaching people, is you have to actually b both be operating on the same definition of what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. 
Because if you, like when Joe and I did that discipline deficit, to me discipline was how much effort you put into something. Mm -hmm. And his was the being disciplined, you know, spanking mm -hmm. and punishment. Yeah. Thought like that we were talking. Thought that now. we were talking about the yeah, same yeah. thing. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. So coming up with a distinction, so that we can communicate the same way, mm -hmm. and not trying to force my distinction, but making sure we're, we're going to talk about paradigm as being the same wording, so that okay. you, we don't flounder on it. Okay. So a paradigm <laughs> is. You, so if there's a system that has six parts to it, and I'll just use this and it happens to correlate to what we're going to talk about. So this is the full system. A paradigm would be operating only with two part or various parts of that whole system, mm -hmm. thinking that you're doing it the right way. So a paradigm is when you're, you're not using everything, you're using parts, thinking that it's the whole thing. Mm. And that is one of, the, one of the definitions of a paradigm. So you're, you get stuck in this paradigm of how you view the world, and that way that you now view the world and operate in that world makes you the person that you are. Mm. However, you're not using the whole freaking system. Mm -hmm. So the paradigm, paradigm is using part of a system, not the entire system, yet thinking you're using the entire thing. For example, speaking and not listening. We, th we may be under the paradigm illusion that communication is your ability to speak, hmm. but you're missing listening. Yeah. So you've got them a great order. Dude, you can't get anybody to do shit because you don't consider listening. Mm -hmm. So that if you operate in the communication space that speaking is more important than listening, you're playing at 50%. And yeah. that would be fucking brutal to play yeah. that over time. Yep. Exercise without recovery, which is a, a <laughs> terrible paradigm to live in. Mm -hmm. Double down. Work harder, work harder, work harder. And you're, you know, yeah. whether you're not discovering it. Yeah. Dude, you could do a great workout and you don't mm -hmm. rest, you're operating at 50% of what you could possibly be operating right. at. Making money and not saving money. God, we made a million dollars. We didn't consider saving it. Mm -hmm. How much do you have at the end of the year? We're going to make a million dollars this year. <laughs> so it's a terrible paradigm yeah. that people find themselves in. Yeah. Giving and not receiving. So if you're just a giver, and you never receive, you are operating at a different perspective. Yeah. It's ineffective to operate in a paradigm. Okay, so now back to the original question, where do results come from? So we took a, a new penetrating look into a little more specificity. What you were good at doing and why that was the case, what you were bad at doing and why you think that was the case. So either canvas yourself or be a third party, like try to be a representative to the, the whole population answering this question. Why are people good in this category? And their health, their fitness, their ability to perform, using their body. Why are people good in this area? I mean, as soon as we went through it before the first time and finished it, I felt like focus was for all of them. Okay. Focus. Yeah. Uh, Natural. Because people are going to answer it this way. Yeah. Um, practice. Practice. Consistency. Uh, Coaching. Mm-hmm. I think pain threshold actually okay. has a lot to do with it. Support. Yeah. 
And we can keep feeding that if we want to. That's the next one. Smart. Why are there people who get straight A's, who are smart as shit? What causes them to be smart or very intellectual, demonstrably so? Like, why is there salutatorians and valedictorians? Why do, why are they there, and why is there the goat of the class? So I'm again, I'm answering this from like a, what most people would. Okay, either way. Yeah. I don't know. Right. Um, I think discipline, focus. Um, See, a lot of people would say natural. You know, you understand yeah, what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, Could be the same way. Yeah, I think um, practice, natural support, family. Family's big. Um, resources. DNA. Yeah. Wealth. Why did are there millionaires and what causes them to be very successful in the business world? Um, work ethic, skill set, training, training. Um, could be family. Yeah. Leverage. Resources. Yep. Right time. Mm-hmm. Timing. Could be here too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Luck. A lot of people say that. Mm. Luck. Just happen to find the right answers to the test, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, relationship. Why are some people seemingly so good at relating to somebody else, whether a marriage or whatever? I think a lot of that has to do with family, background, and Focus. Okay. Luck. A lot of people are going to say that. Sure. Oh, you just happened to find your soulmate. Mm -hmm. I didn't find mine, so I, I suffered. Intentionality. Yeah. Intention. And there can be others. Mm -hmm. Why are some people spiritual and others not so much? Right. Mm -hmm. Why are there good pastors and why why do some people have a proclivity towards it? I think uh, openness, open mindedness and versus closed minded. Training. Yeah. Creativity. Family. Family. Environment. Gifted. Yeah. La 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 la. So put some of those down so that you can recall them or take a picture or however you want to do it. Because this is what we, we go into the world, into our day-to-day -day world, thinking these are the prime things that cause success. Mm -hmm. So this is the paradigm that you live in on a constant basis. If I don't have focus, then I won't be successful. If I don't have good coaching, if I, 
have a low pain threshold, I won't be as physically fit. Uh, if I practice, I'm going to be better. If I don't have family support, if I don't have natural ability to learn, then why even try? Uh, if I haven't learned the right skill in business, uh, it could be the luck of the timing of when I try something in the business world, that's why they're successful. In relationship, the paradigm people live in is that I have to be focused on my partner. I had to have had the, the, the family support or I had to have witnessed good relationships to be successful in one. Uh, I l may not ever find my soulmate, so I don't have the luck. If I'm not intentional, if I don't have empathy, I won't be able to relate. People who are great spiritually are creative, go, well, the fuck, I'm not creative. Then I won't even look at being a spiritual person. Mm -hmm. And I've not had training, so I'm probably not going to be good at it. Yeah, my family wasn't. And my family, you know, were Satan worshipers, which mm -hmm. is also spiritual. Mm -hmm. It's just the opposite side. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? yeah. So, and I'm not really an open person, so it's hard. That paradigm, if you operate in that space, it would be hard to pursue that. Okay, these answers are your self-imposed limits that create blind spots. So when you operate in a paradigm, you, using that six-part analogy, mm -hmm. if I'm operating in two of those positions, my blind spots are the other four. I could never consider that. I have to have natural ability, otherwise I'm stuffed. So I create a blind spot that natural ability won't allow me to see. I'm not really good at this. Well, how many times have you tried? Well, I'm not good at it. I'm not gifted. How many times have you tried? Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a blind spot. Mm -hmm. So the theory, so we created, this is what I call theory. So it works on paper. Uh, practice is a theory. Genetics is a theory. Luck is a theory. In reality, like 100% of the time, excuses drive performance. Mm -hmm. I'm practicing and it didn't work. I excuse myself from doing it again. Mm -hmm. So every time you apply an excuse, it's 100% effective. Every time you try practice, it may not be 100% effective. Mm -hmm. So I went and tried to lift 100 pounds. It didn't work. It didn't work. Every time I excuse myself from doing something, 100% of the time, it doesn't work. Hmm. So I'm, I'm really interested in, like, I never, until I was told that, I'm like, 100% hmm. of the time. Yeah. The moment you excuse yourself from a sales call, it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not, I don't really want to call Bubba. 100% of the time, yeah. he ain't going to buy anything from you. So that excuse dynamic, until you're exposed to it, you're like, well, you're right. Every time I don't or I excuse myself from what I'm supposed to do or wanted to do, you guarantee it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Every time you give up, you guarantee the result. So you just ran 99 miles and you gave up in the last mile. You guarantee that you won't do the last mile. The moment you quit, it's over. Yeah. It's like, fuck, well, that's a guarantee. An excuse is a guarantee. The formula that I'm going to expose you to is a guarantee. Mm. I've never seen it not work. Is that the right way of saying that? Yeah. When you do it, it works. it works every single time. What prevents you from doing it is an excuse, and then you quit. These never come into play. I don't know. I don't know if practice is needed as the per first thing to look at. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, if you quit, practice ain't gonna help. Yeah. If you quit or excuse yourself from being, getting a coach, coaching's not gonna be effective. Mm -hmm. So there's something that's happening on a base level that these don't allow you to get the experience of it. Like something was going on before these like these become adjectives describing something. But I want to know what caused that person to
to actually get into the position to be successful. Which then goes back to honoring your word. Mm -hmm. You don't honor your excuse. As long as you honor your word, you'll find access to these things that you're talking about. Yeah. And if you give up, people give up in three places. Before they start, while doing it, and close to the end. Mm -hmm. That's when Those are the three weird positions that people give up on. Mm -hmm. Percentile wise, where do people give up the most? The most? I would say before. Before. Yeah. Around 80, 75 to 80% of people give up before they even start something. So 85 or 80, it's actually a little more than that. If you look at a broad scope of people, even if you look at all the things that you've done in your life, most of the time, you didn't even initiate it. You had an idea, didn't even start it. 85% of the things that you had in your head that were possible for you to do, you didn't even start. And looking at yourself or the broad spectrum of human beings, 15% while they're doing it go, I'm out. Mm. Or they excuse themselves from doing it. And then 5% of the people don't take that last step over the threshold. They've done 10 years, they're like, ah, it's not worth it anymore. So they don't take that step. Mm -hmm. What prevents them from take, not taking that step into either of those positions is I excuse myself and I quit. I have training. You've ran 900 or you've ran 99 miles. Mm -hmm. Dude, you had training. Mm -hmm. Even if you didn't have, have training prior, you just actually, mm -hmm. to, you just ingrained this in your soul that you're a runner. Yeah. But something prevented me from doing that. I didn't have support. That's an excuse. Mm -hmm. So another way of looking at everything that you put on the board as a positive, it's actually an excuse. Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't get enough training, so I quit. I excuse myself from it. And when I got exposed to that, I was like, oh my God, so it's not what I thought it would be. Success, rarely, <laughs> what it really takes to get to the end, yeah. ain't all those things. Mm -hmm. So the underpinning is something more profound that everybody has access to. It doesn't matter where you grow up. It doesn't matter how much money you started with. It matters that you understand this dynamic that you actually live into. It's on page eight. So we're going to go through an example of a paradigm loop. Using fitness as a place to talk about. So the fitness industry is a multi, multi-billion dollar industry. My question is, why? Because people quit. That's the key answer. If you can create an industry where people are going to quit, they'll always want to come back to it. Mm -hmm. So they're operating in a paradigm which causes itself to not work out. The nor so normally, what do you need in this paradigm that people live in? What do people need to start an exercise program? Knowledge what to do. Okay. Or a plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else do they need? Um, they need support. Okay. Accountability. They need... Which in their brain would still exist right here. Yeah. But so I... Why would I have a plan? Why do I want a plan? A goal. Okay. I, it occurs to me that these are the two things that everybody op needs currently because of the paradigm that they're in. 
take, for example, using gross metrics, mm -hmm. the dude's 300 pounds. So, so we're going to start fill in. We're going to start to fill in this paradigm or this loop that he's immediately going to find himself in. So, what's his goal? To lose weight. Yeah. So, the the loss of weight. Say it would be. He's 300 and he wants to get to 200. Okay. Do you know how many people are already in that? I'm too heavy. I want to lose weight. Yeah. And you can, with your knowledge base. Show them how to do that. Mm -hmm. So what's one thing that he needs? Diet. Diet. Work out. Um, Say coach? Yeah, coach. Um, supplements, I guess, is diet, but... Uh, you could break that down, but yeah, keep it as diet now. Um, I would say... You could add like gym, uh, equipment, place to go, um, a routine, okay. or schedule. Which could be the workout, but yeah. rest. Uh, rest, recovery. Um, rest could be sleep, could, or you could also say, you know, therapy. Mm -hmm. We'll just stop there. Say that there's detailed degree of what you're going to eat, when you're going to eat it, how much you're going to drink. Say that that's in place. Mm -hmm. Here's your workout. What's the common workout that are, people are taught? Um, Not the Tyler workout. Running, jogging, walking. How many times a week? Um, five, three. Okay. Three five. Normally it's three. Yeah. Three, three X week. Okay. Say that I have a coach identified. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's going to, an accountability partner, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And I went out, either I go to a gym that has equipment or I buy the equipment. Mm -hmm. Say that that's in place. Now I know, not only am I going to work out three times a week, but I'm going to do the specificity of, you know, a hit workout and a stretch routine. And these people told me I have to get an eight hour sleep and I have a massage therapist that I go to or a chiropractor. Say that that's in place. Okay. With a, a degree of certainty, like we've put 10,000 people through this. If you do this, you will get to this, mm -hmm. okay? After the first week of doing this, What's the normal weight loss? Mm, nothing. After a week? It, it really doesn't matter. I don't, the answer doesn't Let's, matter. Yeah, say five pounds. Okay, so I'm at 295. After the second week, Two. say 290. Yeah. Okay, just for training purposes, we'll stop at the second week. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I wanna ask this person this question. How is the diet going? You're two weeks into it. You've lost 10 pounds. How's the diet going? It sucks. It sucks. So it, they're like, dude, I, this cardboard is killing me. Mm -hmm. Can you change the diet? Will the coach allow the diet to change? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, and, dude, my belly, I'm puking all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm having a response to that. So I end up changing this. I can't do no carbs, I do a little bit. Yeah, so you change the diet. The three times a week, how's that going? He's either going to say, or she, he's going to say, well, that was effective, or uh, I can't go in in the morning anymore. So mm -hmm. normally this gets changed too. Say I, I keep the coach. I love him, man. He's so supportive, and he knows me. Mm -hmm. I feel good about it. So the gym equipment, say that that's not a change. I like it, uh, but I can't do it in the morning, and I've changed the diet. The routine, it's too intense. Can we cut it back? Mm -hmm. So say I change the routine. How's the sleep going? Uh, terrible. Okay, so I changed the sleep. How's the massage therapist? Oh, I need to go a little more. It's so...
Good. So say I just keep that, okay? So now the next two weeks, I've modified the plan, and I'm two weeks in later, I'm at 280. Is this going well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now I'm a month into it. How's the new diet? Mm, it still sucks. Okay. So, say that that, okay, we're, that's working. Coach is working. And now that I'm stronger, I would like to, uh, more equipment to be able to use. So mm -hmm. I changed that. The routine, uh, I'm now more capable. Can we increase the, the hoo-ha? Mm -hmm. Say I change that. Sleep, still good, bad. Maybe I'm at a good sleep. Yeah. And the massage therapist, I'm going to marry her, and mm -hmm. we're all good. So I changed it or didn't change it. This is irrelevant. So things have adapted over here. Mm -hmm. So now I'm another month into it. And something great happened. I lost 30 pounds. So I'm now two months into it. I go over here. How's the diet? Hey, it's on. Mm -hmm. I changed that because I can. Mm -hmm. I made it more intense. Sleep, I don't really need as much sleep, so I changed my sleep. All this for the positive. Say that it's not going bad. Yeah. So this is a positive change. Say that they're not really negative, not to look at it negative or positive. Sure. So now I'm two months into it. I've lost 50 pounds. What happens? You start to ease up. Ease up. I get to a place where I go, you know what? For me to go to 200, I have to change so much that it's not relevant anymore. So I stop at 250. That's neither good or bad. Say I, maybe four months into it, I'm 225. I stop. How many people stop right before the threshold? Most people in a diet. Yeah. Most people in a workout routine never get to where they need to get to. Uh, well, it's, so, but something happened <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So, in looking at that diagram, the the performance paradigm loop is that everybody needs a goal. The goal informs the plan. The plan reinforms the goal, and each time it modifies the goal. So, in that loop, I'm allowed to change the goal. As closer I get to success. I changed my goal, so my goal has changed. Mm -hmm. So this is the undiscovered country, this next conversation. So as you're looking at this 300 pound person that wants to lose weight, that went out and paid $50,000 to fucking lose weight and never really lost to the point where he originally intended, What does this 300-pound person say to himself every day he's trying to lose weight? I'm fat. I'm fat. I wonder, most people take an hour <laughs> mm -hmm. to figure this fucking thing out. It may be because of the, the conversations that we've had. Most people can't come to that realization that this person through the whole process kept saying this or so the the fitness industry isn't built on this it's built on some smart motherfucker knowing that these people that we're selling shit to can constantly tell themselves, I am fat, I am unfit, and I'm not healthy. And I can sell that person tons of shit, and they're never going to arrive at a place called, I am fit, or I am skinny, or I am healthy. Mm -hmm. So this never changed throughout the whole process. Because 
I am fat still says it here. Mm -hmm. I am fat can't live in the same position of I am skinny. So this has to seek itself. This declaration statement has to find itself here. It cannot find itself here given the paradigm that people live in. Mm. It, very profound to understand that. Yeah. So what has to happen first? Figure out who you are. Who you are first. How does a 300 person, 300 pound person, figure out who they are first? What does it look at? Who they want to be. So my experience of a, if you're 300 pounds yeah. and you ask them who they are, yeah. what are they going to answer it from or where are they going to answer it from? Their current, Their current fucking state. Yeah. So the world told them who they were mm. and they agreed to it. That's why they're 300 pounds. It's not intuitive to be able to declare who you are from a place where you are not. Mm. I'm not healthy. I can't run. What do you mean you can't run? I tried. Mm. But that person doesn't say I'm a runner first. It looks for evidence. Mm. So this formula is designed around it needs no evidence to support it. So it only like needs faith, language. Faith based. It could be faith based. Yeah. It only needs language to support it because it's designed on filling itself in. So there's a code, my understanding of it, is you're already born with this formula in place. It's just waiting for you to fill it in. Mm. Well, since you don't want to fill it in, you let the world fill it in. Mm. So the, however it gets filled in, it'll, it'll work itself out. It's currently getting filled in here. I am fat. And my goal is to not be fat, which can't happen. Yeah. So I fill in fat with a representative fat. This only represents fat. I'm still fat. Mm. I'm less fat, but I am still, I am fat. Yeah. Or I'm still unfit. And then eventually this gets filled in. I can download, I can Google any plan to be successful, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to carry it out because I don't understand the whole dynamics of the formula. Is there, is there a particular dynamic when someone does go from 300 to 225, the goal was 200, but they get to 225 and, and they switch to, it's like they said I'm fat, but now they're like, hmm, I actually looking pretty good now. And that's what makes them go back to 300. They may never go back to 300. They will stay here. Okay. They may stay lower than this yeah. first weight, yeah, yeah. but this never changed. Okay. So, you know, you're asking to jump forward. Okay. Can this change and this change eventually? Yeah. Yeah. If you understand how what's going the dynamics behind it. But this, again, that gets back. To this the could represent. If I understand the dynamics of the formula, I could just clean slate it and go, my goal is to be 225 pounds. Mm. If I know how to use the formula, I can always change the formula because who's responsible to the formula? You. Mm. If, if you master this, you can always change this and have a goal representative of it. So quickly going to until you heard this, mm -hmm. answer that question. How would you fill this in representative to a six pack? So not knowing. Yeah. Uh, so how would you have filled this in if your goal was a six pack? before you understood the declaration statement. How would you fill this in? I'm out of shape. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. 
I'm out of shape, but my goal is to be. See how. So this will never attain that. Yeah. You'll get it, but what will you say about it? I'm still out of shape. That's not where I want to be. Mm -hmm. So you'll change the goal quickly. Because this, you have to master this first and understand the dynamic of this declaration statement. Or it's like, for me, it's like once, once you get it, you feel like it's not... Not enough. It's not really you. Yep. That you're still just operating out of a certain place that's outside of you. Yep. This, if you transcend this, if you understand this, that changes the dynamic of how you look at a goal. Mm. There are, the power of declaration is historic. There are times when things have been declared in the Bible, in Genesis, what's the first declaration statement? Which is the power of Genesis. What did God's reference in Genesis have it was in the first few stanzas that what I am well, yeah I'll get I'll get to that but yeah yeah so his name was Yahweh mm -hmm. which is I am that I am the power of I am that I am mm -hmm. whoever I say I am that's who I am mm -hmm. so Yahweh if you replace the word God with Yahweh mm -hmm. it changes the whole dynamic of how you look at religion mm -hmm which is a whole other conversation. Yeah. So I am looked at what? He looked at the darkness. The darkness or the void. Mm -hmm. And what he what happened then? Do you remember? Right. He said he declared into the void light. Mm -hmm. There was no light until he declared it. Mm -hmm. So the declaration has to happen without evidence. Mm -hmm. I am light before there is light mm -hmm. so I want light I am light my goal is to create light it's different now that I've exposed you to this how you look at a goal will be different mm -hmm. It's the power of what I call internal dialogue because I had to name it something. Mm -hmm. This needs to declare itself <clears throat> when there's no evidence to support it. Because the formula doesn't require evidence. It only re requires that you declare something and then you find a way to measure it. Another place that things were declared before there was evidence is the Declaration of Independence. If you understand the condition of the colonies at the time, there was no independence. Mm. You were dependent upon England and actually France too for everything. They declared independence before they were independent. Mm -hmm. They became I am independent. And they were, we are now independent of England on September or, or whatever, yeah. 1776. They declared it before there was it was even possible. Mm -hmm. By declaring it, you create the possibility that it will happen. So this declaration statement has to then have a goal it has to be bigger than itself. You can't have a goal in this formula that is equal to itself. So if you're, if you're already capable of running a 5K, if your next goal is to run the same 5K, it can't work out. Mm -hmm. This thing has to be bigger than this thing. If you don't, if this isn't bigger than this, you will destroy this so that that thing is bigger. So another way of saying that is if I put 5K here, 
as a goal and I'm currently capable of doing it, I have to d declare myself Love. less. Yeah. Which is the real terrible spin that people put on it. I just want to run another marathon. Do another marathon. So the person that you say that you are becomes less and less and less and less and less. You don't always have to like run. Create more difficulty to do what yeah. you've already done. Do you have to then say, I'm not really fit? Yeah. And you have to destroy who you are so that the goal is bigger. Hmm. Unless you say, given the conditions that I'm facing now, 5K is huge. When I was just running before I was married and before I made a million dollars, 5K was easy. Now, from the position of a different perspective, Dude, running a 5K is like running an ultra marathon. Mm -hmm. If you say it because you recognize that it's ominous, that's also appropriate. Okay. Or if there's like a time parameter. Yeah. Or you say, yeah. I'm going to run it in I'm gonna run three minutes faster than a 5K every day for 21 days. Yeah. That's now, I can run a 5K in my sleep. And running it every day for 21 days, that's a Herculean effort. Yeah. So it declares it from fuck, I don't know how the hell, the, as long as it, it, literally the experience of the declaration has to occur to you like this. When you sign that document, you're like, mm -hmm. I don't see how it's going to work out. So you have to declare it without any solution that it's possible. Mm -hmm. Because the formula requires that dynamic to happen. Mm -hmm. So with that, a lot of, you know, you hear a lot of people and they talk about goals and making them realistic. That's a paradigm. Yeah. Now I can sell you anything into that space. Realistic goals are for something else in the... So... Because just in saying that, that destroys who you are. Yep. So, to this morning, it's to expose you to the formula, mm. the language-based formula. Okay. Then, <clears throat> I have to have to show you that everything in you, all your senses, all your muscles, everything about you as a human being is literally designed to be on and off, not used at half measure. So your eyes don't turn on with half measures. They turn on using burning 100% of its fuel. And if you don't understand that, your, your muscle is actually designed to only go at 100%, like all the way on, then it, then it turns itself off. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand that it's designed to only operate 100% for a short period of time, you make it operate at less, less, less efficiency. Mm -hmm. If you learn on and off, like your eyes blink because they're, you're supposed to blink. So it'll force itself to blink. Mm -hmm. And I'll take you through that experience. Your muscle is perfect when it's on and off. Mm -hmm. If you burn it out, you keep it on, and you think, ah, oh, if I push through this, I'm really efficient. You're operating at 20% of its efficiency. Mm -hmm. If you operate at 100, and 100, and 100, and 100, and 100, and 100, mm -hmm. you'll get shit done so quickly, you're like, oh, this is much easier to do it on and off. Like the lights here are flickering, because mm -hmm. they, they don't operate it all the way on. They're pulling energy, but they're flickering. They're flickering because of design, at a higher frequency than your eyes flickering. Mm -hmm. So it looks like it's constantly on. So the master of focus functions like this. I'll do it here. So, okay, turn on light, turn off light. On, off, on, off. So if I do this, even though because of the frequency of it, yeah. if I turn it on, turn it off. Turn it on, wait, on. It's opposite here. It's killing me. Yeah. On, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. I burn less energy and I really use it efficiently. Mm -hmm. But most people turn it on, 
turn it on, keep it on, keep it on, 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 and it diminishes itself. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you ask the question, uh, I was showing you this, so emotion is the r big problem and success for human beings because emotions and problems arrive at the same time.